I'd like to take a moment to talk about AI, how it might impact your research, and how to use it responsibly. The reality is that AI is here to stay. Uh, it's one of those things that whether we are comfortable with it or not is going to be part of our lives. Just since the start of this course, um, Google Bard has been added to my Google Suite, whether I want it there or not. Um, and Grammarly, which we have um, actively encouraged you to use, has launched their own AI called Grammarly Go. In fact, this statement about the ubiquity of AI was actually written by Grammarly Go in about 10 seconds and was very easy to insert directly into this PowerPoint with the click of a button. Because AI is here to stay, I think it's important to try to understand how we can use it effectively in our research and what types of practices are ethical and unethical in its use. What you're looking at right now is the ChatGPT4 interface. Um, I asked ChatGPT to write uh, an introductory paragraph or introductory set of paragraphs about a particular topic, uh, which it did a reasonably good job of doing. Um, it's lacking a few things uh, in terms of citations, um, but it's easy enough to go back and ask it to modify um, its original response to include those, those elements. This would not be an ethical use of ChatGPT or any AI for that matter. Um, however, it can be a way for, for you to help to find language that may have been elusive for you. So it is okay to throw some thoughts into something like ChatGPT or BARD or other AI interfaces um, to get an idea of how to get started. It's a good way to get over writer's block. Uh, but remember that ultimately your work does need to be your own. Uh, and if you do use AI, you should be citing it as um, one of your sources. A practical use of ChatGPT in terms of your research would be to ask it to generate a set of keywords around a topic that you could use in the search of a database or Google Scholar. You'll notice there's some strange things in the formatting here, like zeros instead of tens and not restarting numbering. Um, but these are, these are all good places to potentially start if you were trying to find information about this particular topic. So again, it's a practical use of AI. What you're looking at here is Google Bard. Um, and the prompt that I asked, uh, that I gave to Google Bard was, uh, write a 500 word literature review for a dissertation about the impact of teacher wellness on student achievement. Include 10 peer reviewed references. This is what it kicked back to me. It gave me an introduction, a theoretical framework, and then the lit review with sources cited. And then a brief conclusion, as well as a reference list. Now, I don't know if any of these references are real, um, but it, this is potentially a way that people could um, use AI to have their work done for them. This would not be an ethical use of this. However, if you were to say, um, give me 10 peer-reviewed articles, about teacher wellness, and it pumped those out for you, that might be okay. Um, you again would probably need to take these and plug these into um, the databases at USD or at least into Google Scholar. Uh, but this is 
a way that you could jumpstart some of your research if you really found that you were stuck. Just to show you how absolutely ever-present AI has become, this is a blank Google Doc that I just opened. This prompt right here is from Google Bard. If I click on that, uh, I can tell it what, it what I want it to do. Um, it's giving me some suggestions about things that I might want to do. Um, but it's going to be unavoidable uh, when you see these things. In fact, on this page, there are two AI interfaces taking place. So this one is Bard. And down here, we have Grammarly Go, which gives you the same kind of idea. You can set the, set the voice. Um, and then you can have it begin writing work for you. And it's that simple to actually use these tools. Again, the ethics behind using them is that the work should ultimately be your own. Um, what's written here is not actually going to be helpful at all. Um, but just keep in mind that you're going to be, you're going to find that this is absolutely unavoidable. All of this is really just to say that um, use these tools responsibly to do things like jumpstart your writing when you're stuck, to maybe help you to craft some synthesis of uh, various articles or of your own statements, um, to help you find language, uh, to help you find keywords to search for. Um, but when you do use AI, make sure that you are citing it if the work appears in any of your finished products. Um, and just be very careful about the ways that you go about doing this. Um, you want to make sure that ultimately your work is your own and that it's something that you're proud of.